a very uncommon thing to shoot a film on an iPhone on any phone for that matter. So when we were telling people that you are going to we are going to shoot a film on a phone, they were like, "You can't do it. It is not possible. Just go. <laughs> you are just fooling around." സിനിമ പ്രേമികൾക്ക് ഈ ചാനലിലേക്ക് വീണ്ടും സ്വാഗതം ഹായ് ഞാൻ ആഷിഖ് സതീഷ് എഴുത്തുകാരൻ സംവിധായകനും സാധാരണ ഈ ചാനലിൽ ഉണ്ടാകുന്ന എപ്പിസോഡുകളിൽ നിന്ന് ഇന്നത്തെ എപ്പിസോഡിന് ഒരു അല്പം വ്യത്യാസമുണ്ട് എങ്ങനെ ഞാൻ സിനിമാ സംവിധാനത്തിലേക്ക് എത്തി ഇതിനു മുമ്പ് എന്തൊക്കെയാണ് ഞാൻ ചെയ്തിരിക്കുന്നത് അങ്ങനെയുള്ള പല ചോദ്യങ്ങളും എന്നെ പരിചയമില്ലാത്തവർക്ക് ഉണ്ടാകും ആ ചോദ്യങ്ങൾക്ക് ഉത്തരം പറയുന്ന ഒരു ഇൻ്റർവ്യൂ ആണ് ഇന്നത്തെ എപ്പിസോഡ് ഇന്നത്തെ എപ്പിസോഡ് ഇംഗ്ലീഷിലായിരിക്കും ഉണ്ടാവുക ഫിലിം മേക്കിംഗ് ജേണിയിലേക്ക് കടക്കാൻ ഇരിക്കുന്ന നിങ്ങളുടെ ഒരുപാട് ചോദ്യങ്ങൾക്ക് ഈ എപ്പിസോഡിൽ നിന്ന് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ഉത്തരം കിട്ടുമെന്ന് ഞാൻ വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നു So welcome to Cinema Log Tashik. Thank you. Uh hope you're doing good. Everything is fine. We can start uh again just for the audience. Uh please leave your questions in the comment section and we will be definitely taking it up for a short Q&A session. So Ashik if you could give a small introduction to start with about yourself. Thank you. First of all, thank you Gopi and thank you Art with Intended Intent for having me here. It is a pleasure to be here and uh, sharing my experience. So um I am an engineer by degree I am from Kochi Kerala I did my engineering in electronics and communication and uh, it was not the best choice for me <laughs> but that was what was offered to me when I was starting out and uh, I was placed in TCS in Bombay Tata Consultancy Services in Bombay where I spent working for 3 years all the 25 years first 25 years of my life I spent <laughs> searching for what to do what is the purpose of my life what am I uniquely gifted in and it took me 25 years to figure out what to do and and after resigning from TCS I went for a one year hiatus I went around hitchhiking across India all the four corners of India to find my purpose sort of and in that searches I somewhere found out my purpose or the thing that i am uniquely gifted is to write and tell stories and uh, so i came back to kerala and since then since 2016 first i've been here in kerala working studying i'd already made short films before this so the extension of all the things that i was passionate about like writing cinematography sound music a camera all of that came together in films and um, slowly it became the thing that i was doing and in the last over the past 5 years i have made 10 plus short films i have assisted two feature films one of which went on to win kerala state best film award i have uh, assisted ads and all the over the things that i did i sort of uh, have been preparing myself to make my first debut feature film and i wanted it to do it in a very um, very minimalistic way where i get to learn myself and that is how the film that i did happened munna river which means for knowledge and it is the first malayalam feature film to be shot entirely on an iphone this iphone to be exact it's an iphone se the first generation yeah yeah so thanks ashik for the introduction yes uh, so we will just get on with uh, knowing more about your journey as a filmmaker and then now of course about munna river so uh, we'll start with you actually as a filmmaker like uh, so how when when did you decide to become a filmmaker uh, what was your journey like to your first uh, feature film like how did you make the decision what was your inspiration go okay. ahead yeah so i come from a very um educational oriented family my uh, working class family my mother is a doctor my father runs a travel agency my sister is a doctor my grandparents are all professors and teachers so none of my family members are even remotely related to art field so for me to uh, I, i did not even realize that i had a talent for anything in art until i got the 12th standard uh, board exam results and i was the school topper in english which was a surprise for me my parents my everybody in my class <laughs> that was the first time i realized okay maybe there is something that i am good with in language but even then i did not think of making it into a career 
I thought it will be something of a pastime. Whenever I'm the heartbroken, whenever my girlfriend dumps me, I'll just write what is there in my heart and be done with it. And uh, over the uh, time when I was in engineering, somewhere I had this passion for photography. It uh, I got my SLA when I was in my first or second year of engineering, and since then I was the class um, photographer for everybody. That time SLAs were not so common. I uh, in, me carrying around the SLA was the biggest cameraman in my batch, um, and I learned a lot with cinematography in photography. And the camera that I coincidentally bought was the first Nikon camera, which also had a video recording function. It could record HD videos as well for ten minutes. So one day, me and my friends came together and decided, okay, why not we shoot something of a short film or something and uh, try it out. I then I had already been writing. and i had a couple of short stories that i wanted to make and i had a friend who was interested in sound i had another friend who was inter- interested in camera and this time this is way back in 2008 9 which time making short film was not the big deal that it is now in kerala so um, we got together uh, four of our friends and we bumped into one of our friends house and we just went and shot the film which was barely 3 minutes it was a silent film and uh, we put it up on youtube and one of the comments that i received was that this has potential which sort of stuck in my head somehow um, but even then i never thought of becoming a filmmaker i was just going on doing my engineering and going to be an engineer and i got placed in tcs i got placed in accenture and i went with tcs I, what i learned in photography came into use when i was working in tcs which was completely unexpected i never thought something that i learned for my passion my art my interest would be of use inside a professional uh, setting which was the uh, rules of framing the positioning all of that you learn in photography were also made use when we were making mailers and posters inside of tcs i went into a i left so- software within the 6 months and then i went into a um, a team that dealt with documents Uh, making sure the english was okay which was where i developed my english a lot and uh, all of this why i'm saying all of this is because i was not a person who realized when he was 8 years old that he wanted to be a filmmaker it took me 25 years to figure out okay this is what i want to do i am very jealous of my mother because she knew when she was in second standard that she wanted to be a doctor i was sitting clueless for 25 years of my life and i i'm saying this now because i want people like me who are out there still trying to figure out what is what they supposed to do know that okay it will come together in time it might not be when you are in my second standard or eighth standard or when you are in college but maybe after 20 years or 25 years so there were people who have found who found their passion 75 years uh, later so that was my journey all of these came together photography writing sound music dance all of these things i had partially touched through and when i went into film making that's when i realized this is what a film director actually does he has to know all of these crafts he has to know costume design he has to know writing he has to know acting all of these come together and that is the job of a director and which was what i was trained for the 30 years of my life so that that is how uh, those things progressed and um, after coming to kerala i had already been making short films so i continued that and uh, slowly by slowly watching my short films other people asked me to assist their films and i went it, it was a slow progression it was not one day i decided to be a filmmaker and the next day i became it took me 5 years to be sitting here where i made my first debut feature film i hope that answered your question <laughs> yes yes definitely okay. i i very much relate when you say educational background and uh-huh. you know we are from the same city and i think my family I, and i can really connect like Uh, how much you would be into engineering and how much time it just takes for us to tell ourselves okay you you can do this if yeah. you can go for this yeah so uh, how many short films or have you made before the feature on monerver and how many features have you been a part of before you made the first feature i did 10 short films all of which were made in very low budgets budgets something like 5000 rupees which were all written and directed by yourself yes written directed and uh, some of them i even did the cinematography for it right uh, it it was a very low budget productions it mainly most of them happened in one or two locations and it was 
acted by the one of the short films was acted by my father my friends we just came together and did it then after it, it was a learning process all the 10 short films uh, how i learn as i want to do something let's say i want to learn filmmaking then i'll just go with what i have and do it and after doing it i'll realize okay i did not know this i did not know that i did not know this and then i'll go and research and study and figure out where those gaps in my knowledge are and then in the next short film i try to cover those gaps and make new mistakes which i learn and improve on the next film so the 10 short films i did all of these were done at very minimal budgets uh, with very minimal crew so that i can learn the craft of being a director and be on set with larger crews and handling the medium just to for example if you take a painter the painter has to know all the different brushes that he has the different colors how to combine those colors those are his tools similarly as a director my tools are the camera the actors the costumes the, everything that you see on in front of the camera the timing of it the editing the pattern those were the things that i have been learning in the 10 short films that i did and the all the short the format of making a short film is entirely different, not entirely different, but vastly different from how you handle the feature film format, which is one, one and a half hours long. A short film, you, it's like if you think of it as a buffet, basically you're making one dish and uh, in a short film. But when you're making an entire feature film, you're basically making an, an entire buffet. You have to have grasp of all the different variables. And it's multiplied when you're making just one dish, you just have to spend maybe five or 10 minutes but when you're making an entire buffet, you have to have uh, a lot more time and resources to do that. So those things I learned when I was assisting two feature films, one of which, I, as I said, went on to win the Kerala State Best Film Award. The other one is currently being streamed on C5. So both of those films, they were again done at lower budgets, not the uh, proper commercial film budgets, but indie budgets. And there I learned how to make use of what I learned and scale it up to a one, one and a half hour long feature. So yeah, the answer your question is I assisted uh, two feature films and I made 10 short films of my own. Two of which I think right. you were also a part of. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I know very much. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I got the privilege to be a part of, we, when we share the same space in theatre, Ashik, by the way, is my friend from, uh, we, uh, we met at the same uh, theater like we were part of so yeah. that's where we began our friendship so ashik moving on uh, about munarva uh, it's a sci-fi uh, drama yeah. thriller yes uh, in malayalam yes uh, and it's it's a very rare thing to like have a malayalam sci-fi or even indian i'm not very sure if you know even though we have all seen a lot of sci-fi dolls from hollywood or you know, mostly Western. So when you're making, like even if I'm making the feature, uh, I've not yet come to my first feature, but to make a sci-fi, it would take me at least a few years, I believe, <laughs> even to make the attempt. So how did you end up with the sci-fi genre as your first feature film? Like what motivated you? Uh, what were the challenges? Like uh, I see it as a major, like it's a very, courageous step to take so what, what now that you've made it how do you look back at it like uh, sci-fi in malayalam that's my question oh when i was deciding to make my first feature film i had a couple of scripts that i had already written and okay. um, it, it, uh, the f first film that i wanted to make was a film that happened across 15 years the time span was 15 years and the characters were from a lot of age, from, from a child that is two years old, from their grandparents that are six years old. So I needed a lot of talent pool and a lot of money in, let's say, because of the time span of 15 years. We had the, when you see those per people on screen, you have to be able to identify that, okay, this, per, this is the 2002 timeline, this is the 2020 timeline. So you have to be, you have to have a good, uh, makeup team, you have to have a set of actors, you have to have proper... Uh, there were a lot of requirements to be able to make the film that I initially wanted to make. So uh, I had to put it aside for the time being. The reality of the situation was that even if I that was a film that I wanted to do, I will not be able to do because of the 
budget that I was working in. And then one day I was sitting in this chair and I was writing something and I, had, I was going out to meet a friend. And I just walked out from the door here and I barely reached the gate and I had the entire storyline in my head out of nowhere. I don't even know how it came about. But uh, an entire storyline from the start to end, I had all the dialogues, everything was already in my head. And the friend that I went to meet was the first person I narrated the story to and he loved it. And so I thought, okay, maybe I'll do it. And the story that I decided to do, it it sort of is a metamorphosis, a story that came out of the first story that I wanted to do, but it's an entirely different treatment. The first one that I wanted to do was a family drama. This was a sci-fi. And it, the characters are different. The people who have read both the scripts say it is not at all same. But to me, the things that I wanted to say are the same in both of these stories. And even then, when I decided to do the sci-fi film, uh, it was the story required a couple of locations and uh, it needed a certain budget, but then we did not have the budget. So I had to rewrite the entire story so that it happened inside one room. And we shot it actually in this room that you see behind me. Uh, <laughs> so why sci-fi? The story just came to me. I <laughs> it did not choose to make sci-fi. It just happened. And um, the other thing is, like how you were explaining to me right now, the thing about it being a sci-fi film in Malayalam, uh, it's it's quite unique. You don't get to see sci-fi films in Malayala. Even the ones that you do see are not so, what do you say, not of that good of a quality. So I wanted to do something that, that engaged the story, the audience, and captivated the attention of our generation, uh, people, the millennials and the Gen Y and the people that are living now. So I wanted to, a story that captured them. And again, the point about... It being a sci-fi film in Malayalam is quite unique that people start to talk about. So those were the reasons why it happened in sci-fi. The genre happened to be sci-fi. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the idea was to be unique and why now people are talking about. Yes. So that kind of is uh, like an extender towards the next question. How did you come into the decision of making it in, on an iPhone? Like what was the motive? Because it, it's to me like too many challenges, uh, you know, on one place out of it, your first feature. So you're making a sci-fi out of all genres and now you're making it on an iPhone. Yes. So whatever you might have learned uh, or the DOPs around would be at least experienced on a DSLR. So you're making it on an iPhone. So what was, how challenging was it? Or uh, how, uh, what was the reason? How much did it work? And, according to your plan or how much it did not uh, the I, I because the movie was a sci-fi film i wanted to use anamorphic lens because anamorphic lens and sci-fi are sort of they go hand in hand those blue streak lights that you see in an anamorphic lens that those go with the sci-fi so i wanted to shoot it in an anamorphic lens but to get a proper original anamorphic lens for an slr it's so expensive that the, it, it was not something that we could cover with our budget. So that was one challenge that we wanted to be faced. The other was that we wanted to have a lot of gimbal shots, tracking shots where the camera moves from up to down and down to up sort of shots. And these, if we went for an SLR, we would need a bigger gimbal to be able to do that, which again eats into the cost. Uh, with a phone, it was it. You can just put it up on a, a gimbal that is very cheap. You can get it on Amazon for really cheap, and you can get those shots very easily. The third was again to make it remarkable, because ha shooting a film on an iPhone, even when last year when we last to last year when we have, no not last year three years back when we were deciding to do it, it was a very uncommon thing to shoot a film on an iPhone on any phone for that matter. So when we were telling people that you are going to, we are going to shoot a film on a phone, they were like, you can't do it. It is not possible. Just go. <laughs> you are just fooling around. And so that sort of inspired us to, okay, let's just raise the bar. Let's challenge it. Uh, there was this interview of Christopher Nolan where he talks about his first film um, following in which he had just one camera to shoot and it had barely three lenses. And he shot the entire film by himself with that camera and 
those three lenses and the two lights that he had. And in the interview, he says that the restrictions that you have brings, brings out a creativity that makes the film unique and original. So I wanted to take up the challenge and make the film on a phone and see how we how much we can push it and get a... I wanted to make people uh, go, wow, it is not possible. When they see the film, I wanted to make the possible. This cannot be shot on a phone. This is too good to be shot. That is what we did. And uh, the anamorphic lens we shot is this thing. I'm not sure if... Yeah, it's, it's a proper anamorphic lens that comes for this particular iPhone. We got it from US. It's called by a company called Moondog Labs. So we, this gave us those blue street lights the, that flares that makes it look like a sci-fi. We also had a set of um, density, neutral density filters and diffusion filters. This we used so that we could cut down the digital feel of the phone and make it look a little bit more smooth and make it look like a feature film and not like a video that was just shot on a phone. Yeah. Yeah. So again, these things, if we wanted to get the same things for a SLR, it's going to be at least five, ten times the cost of what we had to pay for yeah. this thing. Yeah. Hence, we shot the entire thing on an iPhone and, and people are surprised. Now it is, because of the lockdown, a lot of people have been shooting on phones and it has, that stigma of you can't do it has come down a bit. But even then, I'm very proud of what we were able to do with just this phone. Even the phone that I'm talking to, we used the same phone and this phone, these two phones, and we shot the entire thing in that. Yes, right, indeed. And actually, the uh, phone has become a kind of a trend now. There is even an entire film festival for films made on mobile. Yes. yes. So, yeah, I think, I think you made the right mark at the right time, probably. Right. Uh, so, uh, coming to our main last section uh, is, of course, uh, marketing and distribution. Uh, for us, I mean, independent film, I mean, we are blessed with the OTT platforms these days. Uh, otherwise, it would be, like, close to impossible for most of us to even think about reaching to the public. But uh, I remember you talking about your approach to Amazon Prime and all that. So, but you did well in uh, YouTube and then you did uh, something on Facebook. So, I would like to know a little bit about the distribution for the filmmakers who are looking out there. And, of course, the marketing. Because what I really loved about Munerbu was marketing. Uh, I, I always, even today, I keep seeing the films, the making. Uh, you know, I, I see a lot of pictures, even merchandising. So, as an independent filmmaker, how did you plan it? How did you pull it out? How, like, and how important it is to, for the young new filmmakers to think about marketing in advance? Right. So when we were making our short films, I said that we have gaps in our knowledge, which I make a mistake and then I realize, okay, there is a gap here. I have to learn that and improve it in the next film. This was my first film. And when I was doing this, my entire focus was on just getting the film made so that I can show it to people and go on to the next step. Because like I said, making a short film is a, making one dish, but making a feature film is like making a buffet. When I made the film, I was not aware of the importance that marketing plays, marketing and connection plays. We made the film, I got it done, and I had no idea how to uh, get it onto Netflix or how to get it onto Prime or theaters. Those things I had no, never faced that challenge because all the short films I did before, we do it, we put it on YouTube, we share it among our friends for a couple of days and it start. Okay, bus. But now when I did a film, that opened up a lot of avenues that I did not know existed. For example, film festivals for one, even though there are film festivals for short films, the difference in feature film, film festivals is that there are... The, the good festivals, the big ones, have a market that is associated with it. So the films that get into those big festivals, they have a ha very high probability of being bought by one of those people in the market, film, market that is associated with the festival, and ga getting put up on Amazon Prime and Netflix and those kind of OTT platforms and being screened across the globe. I did not know that such things existed. So that was a huge knowledge gap that for me when I was making the film. 
I realized, I learned all of this after I made the film and we went to uh, Goa Film Festival, International Film Festival of India. They have something besides that called Film Basa, which is basically the market that is associated with film festivals. So at Film Basa, I attended a producer's workshop where I learned, okay, uh, there are these markets, there are people who buy how to go about it, what, those, those, what, are, those, what are those connections that you need, the... Uh, all of those ingredients that I did not know existed, I learned after making the film. So after I've been, it's been almost two years since we finished the film. And now I started, I've been st last for the last two years, I've been focused entirely on learning how to market a film, how to get back the money. With short films, you don't have that option where you have, once you have made a short film, there is very less possibility of you making the money back. Unless it is a very award-winning film and you get into some uh, big festivals. Uh, after we made the film, that was when I realized that making a film now is barely 10% of the journey of a uh, film. After we made the film, it's when I realized, okay, 50 years ago, making the film was the 90% of the journey. And 10% of the journey was getting it out to film festivals because there were very less films that were being made then. But now every other person is making a film, short films or feature films. Everybody, every other person is able to make a film. And the right now the market is saturated with films. So getting your film out to the audience is, has become the biggest challenge in making a film, the filmmaker's journey, which was not something that I was aware of or I... New, I did not even know that we had to have such a big struggle to get it out. There were very few films being made then. And now there is a content overflow. Even now, if you take YouTube and type short films, there are so many short films you, are, you don't even know which to watch. Th this is where some, some of the things that we did before, shooting it on an iPhone, uh, shooting it with very low budget, and all of the, some of those things helped us because people are curious to know how, what is a sci-fi film in Malayalam. Uh, uh, people want to see, okay, they shot a film on an iPhone, okay, let's see how it is, let's see what it is about. Even the trailer to a lot of people seems interesting. So those things st made the film unique in a certain way that people wanted to talk about it, people wanted to watch it. And even like how you were saying in the beginning, because of all of those things, people are interested in knowing, okay, what is this, what is it more about? Even the story in itself is quite something that you are very likely, very less likely you might have seen it somewhere. It's quite a unique story. So people who enjoy sci-fi films and those kind of genres seem to enjoy it a lot and they tend to share it with the others. Even now when I look at YouTube statistics, I can see that most of the traffic comes from people who are recommending it on WhatsApp. So word of mouth is still the biggest contributor to the film. So and another thing, even before we used it, uh, released it on YouTube, we initially released it as episodic content on Facebook where each half hour episode of the film, the film was chopped into four pieces and we released the first uh, 20 minutes of the film one day. We released the next 20 minutes the next day. And similarly, we released the entire film over four days and people were talking about it a lot. It, it was something that has never happened before. Nobody has seen a film premiere on Facebook, which again is adds to the unique uniqueness of the film, the remarkability about it. Because Facebook is a social media platform, people tend to share in that much more, uh, which go, which brought the film to a lot of other audience that we otherwise would not have reached. Again, that was also a unique attempt. I don't know if I will be able to ever do it again. We tried it out. We can just claim to be the first film that premiered on Facebook. I'm not sure, but <laughs> yeah, all of those things sort of added together into marketing. But these all form again the marketing. But selling of the film is another skill that I'm still really developing. How to get it out to OTT platforms for that? So far, I've realized that you need to have connections. You need to know people in the industry. I tried a lot of things. I I went into LinkedIn and found all the people who work as content acquisition managers in all of these companies, all the OTT mm -hmm. platforms, I message them all individually. I tried to get in contact with them. Uh, we tried 
all of everything that we could to get it out to as many people as possible and in between all of that the lockdown happened and <laughs> we ended up releasing the film on youtube and the good thing all about the plan crashed yeah everything's on a crash the good thing about having it on youtube is now that people are sharing it among themselves by word of mouth and uh, it it is now like a flag post how i see it is a flag post for people to come together who are interested in sci-fi who are interested in these unique stories who are interested in people who do things differently like art with intent it it has become a signpost for people to talk about and it brings together a lot of those people that i want to connect with in the future like the audience that is probably watching this so once when i make my other films in the future they will be able to know okay this is a film by the person who made onar okay it's good he is talented okay let's go and watch the film that is how yeah. we ended up releasing it on youtube right great uh, nice. i think we are almost uh, with our time i'll just quickly see if we have questions and then maybe we can start winding it up sure uh, uh yeah oh, so i just wanted just, to bring together yeah. the this book the indian indie film i think it's coming left to right mirror image okay this is a book that i wrote which compiles all of the things that we did how we made how we went from nothing and made a film on a phone and it it it's it's what i wish i could read when i was starting out and that is yeah. uh, it every i i'll try my best to answer the questions that they might be here but it this details all of the things that I learned in the last 5 years and oh, when when can we expect the next film from you feature film from you hopefully in this year and i'm currently writing the script for that film which i hope to hit the theaters with by the end of this year oh great great we're really looking forward to i hope the art with intent and my, my, myself will be soon promoting our six next feature film thank you so uh <laughs> thank you so much thanks everybody who joined us a uh, lot of people who seem to be have enjoyed your uh, story so thank you ashik for taking out the time sure. uh, coming up uh, i've been i mean i've been personally associated with you for some time it's been uh, a great uh, like inspiration from you all this while so thanks again uh, on behalf of art with intent and myself uh, thanks for coming up and um, thanks to all who joined this have a great evening and happy valentine day Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you Gobi and Art with Internet. Thank you all the audience yeah. who joined. Okay, bye. Sure, see you. We'll uh, soon come up with some another filmmaker on cinema love. So until Looking then, bye, take care. Yeah, bye. Bye, take care everyone.